If you want to learn the truth about AR-15 barrel twist and bullet stability, this video is for you. So let's get started. Welcome to my channel. I'm Andy and I am excited to be here today. This is my third YouTube video and the video uh, that actually, uh, or the topic that inspired me to make these YouTube videos. Now my videos are usually geared towards uh, beginning shooters and this video is gonna discuss AR-15 rifle barrel twist and bullet stability. So what bullets you can shoot out of your AR-15 rifle, depending on whether you have a one in seven a 1 in 8 or a 1 in 9 twist barrel. Now we're not going to be discussing the 1 in 12 twist barrels. That's a topic for a different day. So if you don't understand rifle twist or bullet weight slash bullet length, check out my first two videos first and then we'll get started in today's video. Now, why did I decide to start a YouTube channel with this uh, subject matter? Well, there are literally dozens of videos on YouTube that get this absolutely 100% wrong. Um, I would say there's 99.9% .9 of the videos do not accurately uh, tell you the truth about AR-15 barrel twist and bullet weight. Now, when I refer to bullet weight, uh, you more advanced shooters know that it's actually not the weight of the bullet that matters, but it's actually the length of the bullet, a longer uh, length being uh, needing a faster twist rate to stabilize a bullet. There is one video out there by a guy named Freedom Lover who does a very good job on this subject. He doesn't take it as far as he needs to, but I'm gonna put a link down to his video in uh, my description below. And I'm gonna do that because I am filming this during a lockdown phase that we are in, and I don't have access to my original thought, which was to get a one in seven barrel twist rifle to shoot. So I'm gonna only be able to shoot one in nine twist barrels right now. Now, why do people get this wrong uh, about barrel twists and bullet stability? Uh, I don't think people are trying to intentionally mislead you. I just don't think that they are as informed as they should be. I think if I had to guess, it's probably because the military, uh, US military decided to use a one in seven twist rifle indicating they, they needed to stabilize longer bullets. And I think people just ran with that, assuming that you have to have a one in seven twist barrel to stabilize long 75 or 77 grain bullets. So the three things that I see that are wrong uh, with uh, today's videos are people have myths and have carried on those three myths um, throughout the video community. The first myth being that if you shoot a 77 grain bullet, in a one in nine twist barrel, you will not effectively be able to stabilize that bullet and it will keyhole into your target. And what I mean by keyhole is that if we shoot this bullet at 100 yards, instead of the tip of the bullet hitting the target, it's gonna go down the range like this and enter the target sideways. The second thing that I see uh, on the internet with regard to these uh, video myths is people will say, well, yeah, you can stabilize the bullet at 100 yards, but you won't be able to shoot a precise group, meaning that your group is gonna be a five MOA group, you know, the size of my hand. Bullets are gonna hit anywhere in this and you just can't shoot it precisely. The last myth that I see is the group of people, and I saw some of these comments in Freedom Lover's videos in the comment section because he only took this out to 100 yards, his shooting demonstration. Well, in our videos, we're gonna go to 100 yards and we're also gonna go out to 565 yards. Now, I first wanted to get out to 800 yards to show you this, but given our current lockdown situation, I don't have access to that 800 yard range right now. So we're gonna have to deal with 565 or 568, uh, somewhere in there. So the last myth is what I call killing Mrs. Jones's poodle myth, which means some people will argue, yeah, you can stabilize 
a 77 grain bullet in a one and nine twist barrel at 100 yards. But as soon as you get beyond 300 yards, the bullet will just go like a wounded duck, fly off the uh, shooting range, land in Mrs. Jones's yard, who's lived there for 50 years and won't move from the shooting range, killing her dog. You'll get sued and it'll cost you $2 million. Well, today, or in the future here, we're gonna go to the shooting range and we're gonna do that and we're gonna uh, show you that we're not gonna risk $2 million, we're not gonna kill Mrs. Jones's dog, and we're, able, we're gonna be able to get precise hits at long distance. So to do that, what I've decided to do, with, because I don't have access to the one in seven twist rifle, is I'm gonna take three one in nine twist rifles. I don't want anybody saying, you've got the unicorn one in nine twist rifle and it can do all these three things. So we're gonna take three separate rifles to the range. Uh, we're gonna see how they do. Uh, we will go to the range, we'll shoot them uh, independently. We'll come back and look at the targets here in uh, the basement and we'll go over the results. I won't have 10 minutes, I promise, of me just shooting a rifle because uh, there's nothing more boring than watching somebody else shoot a rifle for 10 minutes. Uh, if they get long, I'll speed it up and we'll come back and uh, discuss this in a quick fashion. Uh, going out to 565 yards, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to put that in uh, part two of this video because I think the video will just get too long. So the first, um, two myths we're going to dispel at uh, 100 yards that there are your bullet will keyhole and you cannot shoot precise groups. So the first rifle we're going to take is this 20 inch rifle. It's a free floated um, barrel or a free floated handguard. This is a Rock River Arms rifle. It's a one in nine twist rifle. Uh, it is completely stock. I have not made any changes to this rifle. Uh, it does have a good trigger on it. I will indicate that. Um, this trigger actually is a two-stage trigger. The first stage uh, pulling in at two pounds. The second stage pulling in at a nice one and a half pounds. So it does have a good trigger. Um, the glass on top is a uh, cheap uh, SWFA Super Sniper scope. It's a 10 power fixed scope and it is a $300 scope. It's absolutely great if you're first getting uh, out uh, shooting longer distance. It's a great starter scope. So that's the first rifle we're going to take to the range. Let's go shoot a group at 100 yards. What I'm going to do is this will actually be my first shots of the year. Um, so uh, I'm going to shoot one round into the berm and then I to get the war rifle warmed up and then I'll shoot uh, five rounds uh, through the rifle and we'll see what the results are. So let's get out to the range. We are back from the range uh, with the results from the 20-inch uh, barreled uh, Rock River Arms, the free float uh, Coyote rifle. And we can see that while it shot a good group, it did not shoot a great group uh, with a sp specific load. I will let you know that it does, this rifle actually does like 68 grain bullets better but we went with the 77 grain bullets to uh, shoot it in three different rifles to show you uh, what um, the bullet stability could do. So even in a rifle that does not love this load, it still shot a good group at 100 yards. Uh, in all three rifles today, we will be using the Black Hills 77 grain tip match king bullets. So out of the first two myths that we have, uh, I believe we have been able to show with uh, 1.48 uh, inches or an inch and a half that you can get good groups with long 77 grain bullets in a one and nine twist barrel. We've also been able to demonstrate with this rifle that all the bullets shot a nice round circle and we have no evidence of keyholing. 
The next rifle we're going to shoot at the range is this Rock River Arms rifle. Again, it's a one and nine twist rifle. We're going to be shooting the same uh, 77 grain uh, bullets out of this rifle. It's a one and nine twist rifle. As we can see, the uh, fore end or the handguard is not free floated. The rifle is totally stock with the exception of I did change out the pistol grip. I have larger hands and wanted to be able to get a better purchase on the rifle. And I did change out the A2 flash hider for the Smith Vortex flash hider. Shouldn't make too much difference in our groups. Um, the trigger on this rifle is uh, the hardest or, uh, trigger out of all three rifles we're going to shoot today. It actually has a two and a quarter um, first stage and then the second stage breaks at two and three quarters. I've topped this rifle off with a 10 power uh, night force scope. It's about a $1,600 scope. The rifle is only uh, $800 I believe I paid for the rifle. So it's pretty much a stock rifle uh, except for the two items I mentioned and it has good glass on it. So let's get this out to the range and see how it does. We are back from the range with the results of the 16 inch Rock River 1 and 9 twist barrel um, without the free float handguard. And as we can see, we shot a better group uh, under an inch, at barely under an inch, I should say, at 0.893, um, with this shot being probably a little bit of a wiggle on myself. I was hoping we could get it down to three quarters of an inch. Um, but again, we are shooting uh, 77 grain, long 77 grain bullets in a short 16 inch barrel with a one and nine twist. And we've got excellent grouping out of this rifle. So anything under an inch, we're gonna call excellent. We can also see that all the bullets, although it's hard to tell, there's basically three right here. All the bullets have perfect circles, so we've dispelled uh, the first myth, which is that it would keyhole, and the second myth showing that we have a good group from the rifle. Okay, the last rifle that uh, I'm going to shoot out at the range, and I had to shoot this on a different day because um, somebody thought it would be funny uh, while I was at the range to call a bomb threat into my... Uh, business and I had to leave. So I had to go back and and uh, make sure there was no bomb. Of course, there was not. And uh, so I had to take this rifle out another day. Um, this is a uh, standard rifle with a non-free floated hand guard. Uh, there is one upgrade to the rifle. Um, well, actually two. Well, three. We'll call it three. How about that? Uh, the pistol grip, again, I changed out to make sure that it fit my hand. The flash hider, again, I made it the Smith Vortex flash hider. And I did change out the trigger. This has a uh, Geisley trigger in it. And it's the best trigger out of the group of rifles that I have. The first stage is actually two and a half pounds. And the last stage is a one pound pull. I've got it topped off with a four power ACOG. Um, again, it's a one and nine twist, and I wanted to shoot a four power ACOG uh, for those people that think uh, shooting 10 power is too much magnification, um, uh, and uh, that's why you're getting good groups. So I've got the um, rifle sling still attached. It's actually attached here and mounted to the uh, barrel of the rifle itself. I'll shoot the rifle with the sling attached. I won't take the sling off. And let's go see how this rifle does at 100 yards.
All right, now we're back from the range and we can see the results from our uh, 20 inch barrel, non-free float, one and nine twist shooting 77 grain Black Hills TM key ammunition uh, through a, a four power ACOG at 100 yards. So as we can see here, we've shot basically an inch, just under an inch at .959. Um, all of the bullets out of this rifle, once again, uh, showed no evidence of keyholing. This one has actually two bullets in that hole. That's why it looks a little different, but all perfect holes and a excellent group just shy of an inch at 100 yards with a four power scope. So again, I believe we've now shown with our third rifle that we can get excellent groups um, through a one and nine twist barrel with the 77 grain uh, TMK bullets at 100 yards. So some of you may have been surprised that our best rifle of the day is the 16 inch rifle out at 100 yards uh, with only 16 inches as opposed to 20 inches to stabilize our long 77 grain bullet uh, out of a one and nine twist rifle. It still shot the best group. Uh, I don't remember exactly, 0.8 something. So uh, between three quarters of an inch and an inch at 100 yards. It did have the best glass on the rifle out of all of them. Um, but it did not have the, it had the worst trigger at uh, the second stage breaking at two and three quarters pounds. So next we'll take these rifles out to 568 yards and we'll see how they hit targets out at that distance. Again, we'll test them individually and then we will come back and also discuss some communication I've had from Black Hills and Hornaday Rifle uh, Ammunition Companies and see what their thoughts are regarding AR-15 twist rates and bullet stability. Check out part two coming up and consider subscribing for more content on AR-15 accuracy and long range shooting. God bless and guide America. Have a good one and thanks for watching.